It's all about the cash and what it can do. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Economic Divide. I'm Kabe Tahwaii. Money represents the hundreds of millions of dollars that, to some degree, dictate U.S. policy both within and outside the U.S., including the U.S. presidential elections. That is the topic of our show for today. Now, coming up in today's program, what is dark money? We will discuss the definition and all the different forms that it has in U.S. politics. From super PACs to election money donations, you'll be surprised how the law allows that to happen. Many countries and billionaires actually have been doing that. Which foreign countries spend the most in the U.S.? We're going to take a look at that. The figures will surely surprise you. Over $2 billion since 2016 and counting. Even think tanks are not exempt. And then finally, we're going to take a look at Arab countries. We'll zoom in on some of them, the money they spend lobbying in the U.S., in particular Saudi Arabia. You would be shocked the degree of control they yield over U.S. lawmakers. In some cases, the text is written for them. Money and politics, they go hand in hand. No country is exempt. But in the U.S., things have gone to a whole other level. Large quantities of money, undisclosed and unlimited. This influential money is commonly referred to as dark money. And so far, hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent in the U.S. political system, including from foreign countries. First, the cash. How much? Over $2.5 billion since 2016, money spent through 574 foreign principles. The top countries are as follows. Figures could be a lot higher, since many front companies represent these countries, which makes it harder to track. The last thing I want to do is get rich with as little work possible. That's really what I'm trying to do as the bad guy, right? So is there anything preventing me from holding stocks, say, in an oil or gas company, and then writing laws to deregulate that, that industry and cause, you know, that could potentially cause the stock value to soar and accrue a lot of money in that time? You could do that. Is it possible that any elements of this story apply to our current government and our current public servants right now? Yes. Yes. So we have a system that is fundamentally broken. We have these influences existing in this body, which means that these influences are here in this committee shaping the questions that are being asked of you all right now. Money and politics go hand in hand. That is a given. But to what extent is that true in the U.S.? That's what we want to find out today. The money trail, why it's called dark money, and how do the ones donating keep their identity a secret? Let's get some definitions out of the way. There's this thing called dark money. Dark money refers to money received and then spent in politics. Logically, this is called political spending. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's just follow the money trail now. Now, this political spending is done by three organizations which are nonprofit organizations. They are social welfare, unions, and also trade associations. Doesn't sound that bad, does it? Nothing wrong with that so far. Well, here's where things get murky. First, these organizations can receive unlimited donations. Note, unlimited. Second and most controversial is that they are not required to disclose their donors. That's right, no need to disclose their donors. Who can the donors be? Individuals, which is okay, and corporations, which according to most Americans, is not okay. Second, these organizations can receive unlimited donations from corporations and individuals. Now note, unlimited donations. Now third, who can, get they, uh, who can they get unlimited money from? Not only are Americans not happy with the unlimited money part, which has involved many American billionaires, some U.S. lawmakers, have actually voiced their anger about this. This was especially voiced during the 2020 U.S. presidential elections. I have really had it with billionaires, regardless of party, who think that the rules don't apply to them. I've had it with billionaires who think their money 
buys them something special. All right, that was former U.S. presidential candidate and Massachusetts lawmaker Elizabeth Warren. So how much money are we talking about when it comes to the spending that did, does not uh, disclose or is being disclosed from their donors? Well, back in 2006, uh, it was $5.2 million. And then look, in 2012, the amount skyrocketed to $300 million in the presidential cycle. So a big boost in dark money spending between the years 2006 and 2012. And that's just in a span of six years. Let's fast forward eight years from that date to the year 2020. You won't believe the dark money spent in the 2020 presidential elections. It was more than $1 billion. And here's a breakdown. The FEC spending came out to be about $88 million, as you can see there. Then came digital ad spending, $132 million for that. And then TV ad spending, that was $170 million. And here is what needs to be looked at closely. $660 million came in at contributions from political groups. Why is that important? Don't you think that there are favors that need to be done for those donations? You bet there are, and many include billionaires and corporations for the most part. Now, many Americans view this as undemocratic. The danger to democracy of foreign money in U.S. elections is that it's really a fundamental attack on American democracy. And the more of this information that's sort of hidden behind closed doors, the, the less accountability we're going to have in U.S. politics and the greater the opportunities become for foreign money and foreign influence to sneak in and affect U.S. elections. All right. Even the former U.S. president openly admits not only is this true, well, his party is actually guilty of it. Check this out. They essentially would say anything goes. There are no rules in terms of how to finance campaigns. Um, there aren't a lot of functioning democracies around the world that work this way, where you can basically uh, have millionaires and billionaires bankrolling uh, whoever they want, however they want, in some cases undisclosed. Uh, and what it means is ordinary Americans are shut out of the process. And Democrats aren't uh, entirely innocent of this in the past. Uh, and, you know, I had to raise a lot of money for my campaign. All right, you heard him there. Even the former U.S. president openly admitting not only is this true, his party is guilty of it in terms of uh, what uh, kind of donations are taking place. Well, take a look at this in terms of the Democrats and uh, how much uh, dark money was uh, dominating the 2020 elections. Uh, I mean, in terms of the foreign money, may have very well decided the 2020 elections in favor of the current U.S. President, Joe Biden. I mean, um, you don't need to see what the story is by just looking at here, the Republicans coming in way short in terms of the money that was donated there, uh, roughly about 300 million as opposed to what the uh, uh, Democrats received, which as you can see was over 500 million dollars. Well, let me bring in William Still. He is an economist and also author of The Money Masters, in which he believes in debt-free U.S. notes and ending fractional reserve banking. He also believes that the Federal Reserve should actually end. Okay, Bill, money in uh, U.S. politics is that's nothing new, as you're well aware. This affects and impacts government decision-making. First, Let's take a look at foreign governments, companies, and other entities which pay foreign agents to influence U.S. policy and opinion in pursuit of their own interests. Of course, that includes think tanks. Um, you then have lobbyists within the U.S. who are courting lawmakers and presidential candidates in the U.S. elections. Can you please explain the differences and how it works? This is, this is one of the most corrosive, corrupt, influences in the U.S. political system. Uh, it, it's a very good question that you ask, and I, I'm afraid I can't explain it logically or ethically because um, within the past uh, 12 to 18 months, the, the U.S. Uh, system of equal justice under the law has just totally collapsed, and we're now in this, this horrible morass of a, a combination of corrupt politics uh, combined with um, a corrupt worldwide medical system. For the first time, me uh, the medical world has been corrupted totally by Big Pharma. 
to where they're no longer serving the public interest. They're no longer serving the Hippocratic oath of do no harm. They're now serving the financial interests of corporate big pharma to their everlasting discredit. And it's going to take medicine worldwide, not just in the United States, decades, if not generations, to recover from this. Dark money is everywhere in U.S. politics. It shapes the Americans' psyche on who to elect, from governors to presidents. This includes money in ads and mail. Under Obama's plan, you wouldn't have to work and wouldn't have to train for a job. They just send you your welfare check. What we're seeing now is someone like Adelson promising to spend $100 million on campaigns. You know, us average Americans, no matter how many of us you put together, we could never amass $100 million. And that's just one person who we're trying to fight against. I mean, I'm rooting for the internet and technology to try helping Americans have a voice, but right now we are getting completely, totally drowned out. A lot of reasons not to elect me. It's really hard to get away from ads. Um, sometimes the same candidate will have ads, multiple ads during like the same commercial break, so, you know, it gets a little... I'm not sure how helpful it is. Where did all the Obama stimulus money go? Friends, donors, campaign supporters, special interest groups. It gets to the point where that's pretty much all I see sometimes. Um, and it's also a little funny because I'll see one and then immediately afterwards I'll see another one that contradicts it. They send out all these mailings. They don't care if they lie. Nobody knows who they are. They call them dark money groups and that's exactly what they are. Corporation funnels money to a dark money group. They send out postcards attacking the opponent. When that candidate gets elected, they support the agenda of the corporation. I don't know how to fight them. I can't pick up the phone and say, hey, what's your interest in candidate X? Because I don't know who they are. You wouldn't think foreign government money is behind it, but they are. Even U.S. think tanks are flooded with foreign money. When people say there's too much money in politics, I say, well, how much is too much? Who gets to define that? And if elected officials and incumbents get to decide, get to decide how much is too much, then they're limiting the uh, citizens' ability to engage in the political process. Even after the elections, we're still not going to be sure what the final numbers are because there's so much lack of disclosure going on. Out of 237 think tanks, 70% did not disclose their donors. Some of these think tanks are influential in shaping U.S. foreign policy but governments abroad shaping U.S. foreign policy in broad daylight? That is the case. Countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the UAE have been influencing Washington through lobbyists, think tanks, journalists, and academia. Not only is legislation prepared by their lobbyists all the time, lobbyists actually script what various members of Congress say. In one case, Rep. Ed Royce spoke on the House floor against ending U.S. support for the war in Yemen. His talking points were written by lobbyists for Saudi Arabia. That means the lobbyist was retained and paid for by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, according to federal disclosure forms, in order to undermine congressional opposition to the Yemen war. You know, I had to raise a lot of money for my campaign. Uh, so I, there, 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 there's nobody who operates in politics that has perfectly clean hands on this issue. But what is also true is that all of us should bind ourselves to some rules that say the people who vote for us should be more important than somebody who's spending a million dollars, ten million dollars, or a hundred million dollars to help us get elected. Because we don't know what their agendas are. We don't know what their interests are. Uh, and I continue to believe that Citizens United contributed to some of the problems we're having in Washington right now. Okay, let's uh, bring in our guest for this segment of the program. His name is Bob Barker. He's a U.S. economist. He also uh, works at the Schiller Institute as an agricultural liaison. Bob, welcome. Uh, let's take a look at countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the UAE. They have been influencing Washington through lobbyists, think tanks, 
journalists, academia, and the likes. If U.S. authorities are aware of this, why do they allow this to happen again and again? You look in the, uh, the uh, various countries like Saudi Arabia and these uh, big uh, oil-based uh, economies, and you see the influence that they have, you've got to be thinking about, uh, you know, who's pulling the strings behind the scenes because this is the influence of these old networks uh, going back to, to London and how they have got their uh, um, ability to uh, manipulate and influence things globally. So you manipulate the energy, the oil, or as I was saying before, you take the, the Green New Deal. And, and now that's a major shift because of the financial breakdown. These old uh, 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 empire-oriented companies are trying to restructure uh, their control through uh, financing of green infrastructure, like windmills, um, the, and then also the carbon footprint, where they want to buy and sell carbon, and uh, and that is is like uh, the camouflage because that mechanism is a mechanism to take over all farmland and control the food production beyond belief. Wow, fascinating stuff there from from Bob. Well, what many don't realize is how the Green New Deal, as he mentioned is actually gonna become mainstream sooner than anyone can imagine. And along with that, an industrial revolution of sorts to follow. And of course, the lobbyists will be there. It's time to take a quick break here on Economic Divide, but do stay with us. We have plenty more coming up after a short break. Welcome back. This is our Info News section. First item that we are gonna take a look at is regarding post-Brexit clashes. Yes, this has occurred already, and it's between France and the UK. Now, this particular piece of news said French fishermen protested over rules on fishing rights in an area called Jersey. They're angry that they must now provide proof that they have historically fished in those waters since Britain left the European Union. French boats, in one instance, rammed the UK boat. Now, that is what's called gunboat diplomacy. Okay. Moving on to our next item, the U.S. employment. Well, it's facing a bit of a conundrum, which is really unexplainable. You see, on the one hand, it is reported that there is a shortage of workers in that country in a wide array of industries, from restaurants to factories. Now, at the same time, job numbers were out this past week. And shockingly, the U.S. economy only added 266,000 jobs for the month of April. That's far less than the 1 million jobs that was forecasted to be added. So much for a U.S. economic recovery. On to cryptocurrency. Big warning came from the European Central Bank, or the Bank of English, I should say, where it said that investors should be prepared to lose all their money. It said digital currencies actually have no intrinsic value. That doesn't mean to say that people don't put value on them, according to them, because they have intrinsic, extrinsic value. But that's a warning that crypto investors should actually heed. Something tells me, however, that they're not going to do that. And finally, our look uh, at the final topic that we chose concerns food and hunger. Global hunger crisis to have hit five-year high in 2020 as 155 million people faced severe food insecurity. This was a warning that came from the UN, and this is on top of a report that stated rising global food prices or food inflation could lead to social unrest. This episode of my Time to Wake Up series What we see is an operation that has brought big anonymous special interests to the table where justices are selected by virtue of their writing big checks and um, the vehicle for this has been the Federalist Society which has a fine role on college campuses as a conservative discussion and student group, which has a relatively fine role in Washington as a think tank, uh, as fine as think tanks are. Um, but it also has this additional role 
of taking money from big special interests, not disclosing who they are, and giving them a seat at the table when the Federalist Society is selecting justices. And that is wrong. Is there something about the way that money has been spent under Citizens United that uh, contributes to the thick fog of propaganda that overhangs our politics today? Well, I think anything that undermines disclosure uh, makes it harder for us to find out who's behind what we're seeing online. I mean, people get all sorts of information online, and I don't think anybody wants to get their news from a Russian troll farm, but people didn't realize that's where they were getting the uh, information from last time. So uh, to the extent that Citizens United has, has undermined disclosure, I think it has also contributed. Okay, let's talk to William Still for this section of our Q&A. Bill, the notion of dark money from foreign countries is our focus uh, in this question. How do you see it when countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, or the UAE uh, are influencing Washington through lobbyists, think tanks, journalists, and academia? I mean, how did it get to this point for the U.S.? You know, you mentioned you mentioned Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the UAE, which which shows uh, what you know political standpoint you're coming from, and I understand that. But this is not just Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the UAE. The, uh, once Hillary Clinton uh, became the head of the United States State Department, for the first time, it was just thrown. The, the gates of corruption were thrown open wide, and we still have not recovered. It would e even Trump tried to do his best to to um, take some of that out of the U.S. system, but uh, as you may be aware, the in, entire deep state system of corruption was totally against Trump, and he was like one man. Try, trying to fight back against all of this, and yet he was surrounded by deep, spa, deep state spies and globalist spies, even, even in the White House, even in his administration. And I don't know how the re United States is going to recover, but I know we're going to eventually recover. There's, there's going to be a political backlash, the likes of which this country has never seen before. Uh, the Democrats will uh, undoubtedly uh, lose control of the United States Congress in the by election about 18 months from today, actually. And uh, then we're, we'll, we'll be back to trying to fix the country. And of course, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris can't possibly be reelected. It'll be either Trump or his uh, designated uh, presidential candidate, which would be DeSantis, probably. But uh, Trump will run again, and, and he will be reelected. Maybe the information provided in this program is nothing new to some. But when the democracy of a nation is to some degree written, planned, and executed at times from abroad, or through billionaires and corporations with their own agenda, it does need to be highlighted. This is especially required since it has been going on for decades in the U.S. Well, some may say, so what? It's a U.S. problem. Leave it to the country itself or to its officials. But isn't U.S. foreign policy a worldwide problem when wars are executed? Isn't climate change, for example, a worldwide problem when U.S. gas and oil companies are contributing to it? Think about it. That does it for this week's show. Your comments and questions are always welcome. From Mikovitave and entire team, it's goodbye until the next episode.